Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. Leica 3G, introduced 1957, built until 1960. This was the last and probably best of the Leica screw cameras. Okay, so Leica 3G. Interestingly, this was introduced in 1957. It was made for three years up until about 1960. The Leica M3, which was the newer bayonet fitting model, was actually introduced in 1954, three years before this was launched. So if you were buying a Leica in the late 1950s, you had a choice of the Leica 3G, which was the last of the screw fitting cameras, or a Leica M3, which was the, which was the first of the bayonet fitting cameras. I'm not going to talk about um, the various differences between the various screw models, um, the differences between the 1s, 2s, 3s, the 3 A's, BCs, all the way through to the 3G. I've got another video on that which I'll post a link to above. I'm also not going to talk about what you need to check if buying these. You do need to be very careful when you're buying these because they are quite clearly almost 70 years old. But I'll post a video above, uh, a link above to a video which explains what to check when buying these cameras. This video is just, is, is, is a walkthrough on the 3G. I'm just talking about the 3G itself. Okay, let's, let's, let's start with the top. Shutter release button there, fairly obvious. Shutter dial here, um, shutter speed from a thousandth of a second all the way down to, uh, to a second. If you want to set the camera to speeds below a thirtieth, you need to set the dial here to the 30th position and then the slow speeds from a 30th down to a second are set on the slow speed dial which is this dial just here. So you have two shutter speed control dials, the upper speeds and the lower speeds. That's important to remember when you're checking these second hand because Often the, the upper speeds work, the slower speeds don't. And that's because the slower speeds are operated on a separate mechanism. And if that hasn't worked all the time, which is often the case with the slow speeds, then they do get very sticky. So that's one thing to bear in mind with these, with these cameras when checking them second hand. Um, the, um, the arm there that you can see is the arm that you swing around when you rewind the film. So when you rewind the film, you need to pull that around, which, uh, releases the sprockets on in the back of the camera, which then allows you to use this knob here to rewind the film itself. This is the wind on knob. Around the, knob, my, the wind on knob, you have the, um, the frame counter. You do need to reset the frame counter to zero once you've loaded a film. And just around the uh, rewind knob there, you can see a little lever that goes up and down. That's the, the dark to correction for use with the viewfinder. Now the viewfinder there, you'll see has two windows. The right hand one is the viewfinder itself. When you look through there, you have two Brightline frames. Uh, Brightline frames were introduced with the 3G. The 3F before didn't have the bright line frames, but you have two bright line frames, one for a 50 mm lens and one for a 90 mm lens. So you, you frame through that window there. When you focus, you look through the left-hand window. The left-hand window gives you the, um, the range finder patch, which you need to, um, you need to align correctly to get the correct exposure. So you, you, you turn your, your focusing on the, on the lens there, you'll see two, two images, effectively a split image, and once the two images coincide, your image is in focus. So you focus through a different window to the window that you use to compose. Just to the, to the right there is the flash sync uh, socket. So if you were using flash, you would, you would plug in through there. And on the back there, you've got a film reminder, uh, which reminds you of film speed, film type, etc. The camera obviously isn't metered, so that is very much a uh, just a reminder. Moving on to the front of the camera, you have the slow speed dial I've already mentioned. Here you have a, a self timer if you need that. Len lens on the front obviously, uh, there's no release button because it just unscrews like that. Lens itself, you've got an infinity lock there, so the um, the lens actually locks on infinity and if you want to focus close to infinity you need to um, to just push the button on the front and that unlocks. That's common on quite a lot of these, um, these screw lenses. Also on some of the earlier M fitting lenses, but obviously these days you tend not to get an infinity lock. What you just have is an, an infinity, um, an infinity um, uh, lever, a little lever you put your, your finger into and so you can, which helps you focus with some of the, some of the shorter 
some of the shorter lenses, the 50s and the 35s. Uh, just looking at the top of the camera here, you have four windows. Now the easiest way to identify the 3G is that it has the fourth little square window just there. That's the bright line illuminating window. So that little window illuminates the, the frames in the view, viewfinder. The bigger square window there is the actual viewfinder itself. And the two circular windows there are for the, um, for the rangefinder. Looking on the, uh, the base of the camera, pretty straightforward. Tripod fitting, you can fi you'll find those in a quarter inch or a three eighths inch, depending upon the market that the camera was aimed at. So if you're buying cases or if you're mounting it to a tripod, just make sure you've got the right, the right fitting there. And this little key here is to get into the camera itself. That pulls up, twists around, and off comes the, um, off comes the base, base plate. Now, loading on these can be quite difficult and it is something you, that you do need to master, but once you've got the hang of it, it really is straightforward. What you have on this side, on the, on the wind-on side, is the take-up spool. The take-up spool pushes into there and as you, as you wind the, um, the camera there, that obviously engages with that and the film winds from the cassette onto the take-up spool. Now you'll see just here a little diagram which shows that you've got to trim the leader of the film to 10 centimeters. Now here's a film, modern film, that the, the leader itself is only about five centimeters or maybe a couple of inches. Um, you can load the camera without trimming the film, but I'd recommend trimming the film. Once you get the hang of it, it only takes, it only takes a few seconds. Just trim the film, extend the, uh, the leader itself to about 10 centimeters. Doesn't need to be precise. One thing to be careful of though, is when you, when you cut through the, between the sprockets, make sure you do cut between the sprockets and don't cut through the sprockets. Because if you cut through the sprockets, you'll end up with a little, um, a little bit of film sticking up, a little bit of film, a little snag on the inside of the camera. And if that bit, bit of film breaks off, it can get in the shutter, it can get in the shutter mechanism, and it can cause issues with the camera itself. So if you do trim the film, cut between the, um, between the sockets there, just around there, just to give you the, the roughly the, the, um, the 10 centimeter uh, leader which you've got there, you would then load the film uh, take up a spool into the little spring there, wind it around a couple of times, and you drop the whole thing into the camera, sliding the film itself between the uh, the mechanism there and the rear of the camera, the rear of the camera just there. Once it's um, once it's all in, and once you've got the base plate back on, I was doing that wrong. Once you've got the base plate back on. That then locks there. And gently just rewind here until you feel some tension. You know you've then taken the tension up in the, um, in the cassette. And then if you wind on, you'll see that turning. And as long as you see that turning, you'll know the film is, the film is going through the camera. As I said, not the easiest thing in the world uh, by, by, modern, by modern film camera standards, but once you get the hang of it, it really is quite straightforward. And as long as that's turning, as you wind on, you know you've got the film uh, going through the camera. And as I mentioned at the start, when you rewind, pull this lever around here, that'll disengage the, uh, the mechanism here and the sprockets and allow you to, uh, to rewind here. I hope that's useful. Um, if you've got any questions, please just stick them in the comments box below and I'll answer when I can. Um, otherwise, please subscribe and like and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.